sure key. Mm. So this particular day <coughs> has been so so set aside to discuss the importance of uh, having and attending sangha programs. Omgyan timirandasya gina jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kitam Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarini Vanchakalpa Tiruvischa Kripa Sindhu Beva Chapatitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is a, a verse. Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Shrastri Hoi, Lava Matta Saru Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. And that one moment's association with a Saru, Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, uh, one can be fully uh, Krishna conscious. That is not a, a euphemism or a hyperbole, it is actually a reality. And that means just by one uh, lava mata, lava mata means one eleventh of a second. So if you could divide a second into eleven parts, that's a lava mata. So that much time it takes to become Krishna conscious. <laughs> Not much at all. That's only if your consciousness is in the right place at the time of that association. And what it actually entails is that we uh, bring about that consciousness because the whole process of Krishna consciousness really centers around association with devotees. <laughs> that is the foundation where everything else builds upon. Our chanting, our understanding of the philosophy, our worship of the Lord and our day-to-day -day service, all of that really is situated on the quality of our, san, uh, our Sangha. So it's, uh, and also, in order to emphasize that point, Srila Prabhupada, when he started the Krishna Consciousness Movement, he gave seven principles by which the movement should live by. And one of the seven principles, I believe it was six, is, is to bring devotees together uh, in order to uh, worship the Lord. So in other words, he made that a point that this bringing to go to the Lord, devotees together for worship of the Lord is really one of the most important principles. And so in order to facilitate that, uh, we have what is called Sangha. Sangha means gathering. And so in our Krishna Consciousness Movement, we're, what, what we're doing now is a Sangha. This is a, sangha, a temple Sangha. But it's a regular program that devotees come together every Sunday. And we come to associate with other devotees, to glorify the Lord by chanting to hear philosophical discourses, to see the deity, to worship the deity, and to take Krishna prasadam. This is a very powerful, it's not, we should not minimize this particular program, it's very powerful to elevate our consciousness closer and closest to pure devotional service. So when that is done in a regular way, one starts to actually experience transcendental happiness. <laughs> This transcendental happiness comes by associating with devotees. 
It's really hard to be happy alone. <laughs> of course, you might say, well, I'm with Krishna, but that's for the pure devotees. <laughs> We're always with Krishna, but how much we, can we actually uh, experience his presence? So the whole basis of human life is relationships. And in Krishna consciousness, those relationships have a center, and that center is to keep Krishna in the center and to glorify the Lord in different ways, to perform activities in relationship to the Lord, and to exchange loving relationships with other devotees who are doing the same thing. That all of that is part, essential, I say essential part of our practice of Krishna consciousness. So Sangha programs are actually fundamental in order to establish the, this consciousness of Krishna consciousness. Uh, we spend a lot of time doing other things because we have responsibilities in the world. And therefore that, that becomes what we say a necessity. <laughs> but it's not the source of happiness. Happiness comes when the soul becomes awakened to its nature and experiences the activities that glorify and uh, uh, connect with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. And so to facilitate that, Sangha programs are there. And there are many advantages. It helps to bring lasting relationships amongst devotees. If you want to be happy in Krishna consciousness, develop friendships with other devotees. This is the foundation for happiness, really. We can be happy in our practice of Krishna consciousness, but it becomes very fun, it becomes what we say cemented or solid when we actually develop close and loving relationships with other devotees. And then we share Krishna consciousness, we share the, tribal, the trials, the tribulations, the successes, and the experiences that we have in Krishna consciousness. And you see, just like the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they were on the highest platform of spiritual life. But yet, every day, they would take time to associate with each other and just discuss Krishna consciousness, and they would talk about their service, they would talk about their plans for writing books, and they would enjoy each other's association in different ways. So even, even very, very advanced devotees seek out sadhu sangha, or association with devotees. So it becomes a necessity for us who are still struggling in our practice of Krishna consciousness because the support we need and the experiences we have bring us closer and closer to our understanding of our relationship with Krishna. So this sadhu sangha is very important. And also, when we regularly associate with other devotees, we also get knowledge through, the, through what is called pravachan. Pravachan is what we're doing now. We're giving a lecture that is called pravachan. And Prabhachan helps us to hear and understand and also to see how we can apply that knowledge that we hear in these classes and these discussions. But it also does another thing. It also empowers us to do the same thing. We also become inspired to speak. The process of hearing increases the quality and the enthusiasm to speak. The more you hear, the more you become full with what is called shravanam or hearing. As that hearing increases, there is a there is a feeling of expression that wants to respond to that by speaking what you hear. And so when we what we say condense that to hear more and more and more in association with devotees, we get that experience that I want to also speak about Krishna. It actually becomes a feature that you don't have to really make it happen. You want to happen because the knowledge is building and the understanding is building simultaneously. And you want to speak like that to others, sometimes to other devotees or even to people in general. Um, 
bringing, having sangha programs also gives a chance for new people to join. <laughs> people who are just coming from the outside, who um, may not come to the temple, will have may no devotees. They come, they sit, they start to hear, they also begin to chant. They start developing friendship with the other devotees, and then gradually they become a devotee. So it's one of our one of the more powerful ways to expand our Krishna consciousness movement. These sangha programs, like I just did three sangha programs within the last eight days. We did one in Manga Tangi, uh, no, Tanga, Ma Manga Tangis, Mangi Tangis, a beautiful name. When you I chant that name, I feel like dancing simultaneously. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a name for Srimati Radharani. I don't know what it means, but it, whatever it means, it must be nice. <laughs> Mungatangi. And, and then I did a program on Tuesday at Shashos, and last night at Tat Purusha's place, we did a program. So I've, within the last eight days, I did three Sangha programs. And I can see how these, these programs really bring devotees together, chanting, hearing, experiencing, and at the same time, inspiring devotees also to become more and more engaged in Krishna consciousness. So we want to have more of these Sangha programs. And there's a formula for actually executing the, the Sangha program in such a way that it becomes very spiritually powerful. And we'll speak about that a little bit. Um, it also helps us to develop Vaishnav qualities like humility, tolerance, uh, pridelessness. Uh, it also helps us to understand what is my relationship within the society of devotees and what services I can also perform. So it has that benefit also. Especially these qualities, because it mentions that we really make advancement in spiritual life by developing the qualities of a Vaishnava. Sometimes we hear the question, or devotees ask, how do you know when you're making advancement in Krishna consciousness? <laughs> well, there's two indicators. One is how much you're losing your attraction for material activities and how much you're increasing your attraction for spiritual activity. So that means if you're becoming more enthusiastic in devotional service and, and less enthusiastic for material activities, that's an indication you're making advancement. And the second thing is how much I'm developing these qualities that are mentioned as the qualities of a Vaishnava, which is pridelessness, humility, tolerance, peacefulness, equanimity, um, simplicity, um, knowing the scriptures, being able to speak the scriptures, um, so many qualities. There are many, many qualities in fearlessness, um, uh, a, a service attitude, the more, I, the more eager I am to serve, this is also an indication I'm making spiritual advancement. So all of these qualities are fundamental to our execution of devotional service because these qualities are in the mode of goodness. And in order to execute devotional service, you have to function in the mode of goodness. You can't perform devotional service in the mode of passion or in the mode of ignorance. These, you can practice your devotional service, but you have to elevate yourself to the mode of goodness before that, that, that devotional service gets accepted, actually. It's by the grace of the spiritual master that even if you're below the mode of goodness, somehow your service is being accepted. But only when you, you, you will only experience the happiness of devotional service when you come to the mode of goodness. And these qualities are indicators of the mode of goodness, if you're developing these qualities. They tell you, actually, you're there. Knowledge, peacefulness, 
simplicity, humility, understanding time, place, and circumstance. That's a very important part of growth in Krishna consciousness. How to act in each and every situation you're in. That comes by way of sadhu sangha also. So these are some of the many qualities that will develop automatically or naturally in the association of devotees. And of course, uh, there are many other things. It helps us to uh, understand the importance of Krishna consciousness and it helps us to also to see it also gives you intelligence how to practically organize your day-to-day -day life even when you have to deal with ordinary activities. <laughs> Krishna consciousness is not limited to just spiritual activities. It brought, it's a broad, it's, Krishna consciousness means broad consciousness. The, the more you become Krishna conscious, the more your consciousness expands. And the more you understand, and the more you can understand how you can make progress in spiritual life. And part of that is, it gives you intelligence how to organize your day. <laughs> how to organize your day. Sometimes we find that we, uh, we we have an idea how to organize our day, but then we get so many surprises that come up in the middle of the day, and then we get stuck. <laughs> you know, surprises that we don't expect or surprises that we do expect, and uh, they come out in a different way, though. <laughs> So we, uh, this organization of our consciousness w helps to s be ready for everything. <laughs> to be ready for everything. You'll see, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lecture, there isn't any question he couldn't answer. There isn't any philosophy he couldn't show the futility of that and be able to prove Krishna consciousness is superior to that. I mean, right on the spot, Prabhupada would be attacked, questions about so many things, and his answers are so amazing and so appropriate to the situation that you think, wow, I would have never thought to say that. <laughs> But that was Prabhupada, because a self-realized soul, his consciousness is so broad that whatever happens, he actually knows how. He doesn't even have to think. It becomes natural. It becomes natural because he's connected with Krishna. So these sanghas not only connect us with each other, but they connect us with Krishna in a very um, direct way. Directly, because Krishna is there in your heart. And he's the closest thing to you. He's closer to you to you than anybody else in your life because he's in your heart. You can't get much closer than that. And you're next to him sitting in the heart. There's two, two persons in the heart, you and Krishna, side by side like that. So when you know that, that's nice, right? Krishna's always with me. Uh, but it's our duty to understand how to connect with that person in the heart, although he's so close, we have a tendency to see the life as being out there. <laughs> but it's also what's out there becomes, what we say, easy to, to understand and to interact with when we understand it's here first. <laughs> When it's there first, when you understand Krishna is with you at all times, then you know how to deal with anything, and you also also can connect with Krishna in so many different ways. So this Sangha program is a wonderful program. Uh, there was one um, statement by one senior devotee, and he was encouraging devotees to increase the amount of Sangha programs. And he said, he gave a practical formula. And the practical formula is we have so many families that make up this yatra. It's one of the 
pretty big yatras when you actually look at it. There are many families who are actively engaged in Krishna consciousness. So if every family had a particular day of the week or a particular time of the month to do a program, then we'd have programs every day. <laughs> And can you imagine, you think, oh, well, today is Tuesday. Who's having a program? Oh, okay. I know that person. Or, and Thursday, okay, yeah. So you have a schedule and you know everyone and you know where to go. At any day of the week, you can always get association with Krishna. And then you would also hold programs like that. This really increases the quality of relationships and that's the foundation for the success and the happiness in Krishna consciousness. As we increase the quality of our relationships, uh, Krishna consciousness is like a family. It's not just a bunch of people coming together and doing some things and going home and that's it. It's not about that. It's actually creating a spiritual family where each and every devotee is concerned about each and every other devotee. There's not only a concern, but a personal concern that if I can serve, or I can assist, or I can help, or I can do anything to uh, uh, help another devotee in their Krishna consciousness, that's my happiness. That's the family mood. Just like if you have someone close to you in the family and there's some need, immediately you jump to that need because that's your family. So we're trying to connect and develop the spiritual family because that same spiritual family will be together in the spiritual world. <laughs> and Krishna's there, his Prabhupada's there, and all the great personalities that you never met before are there. <laughs> so it's, um, but if you don't create it here, you can't qualify yourself to go there. <laughs> It has to be done here first, and we develop that sadhu sangha, or association with devotees. And we have so many brothers, so many sisters, so many fathers, so many mothers, so many teachers, like that. Like many times, you know, uh, I'll, you know, one of my mothers will say to me, Maharaj, come for lunch. Okay. <laughs> So that's what a mother does, feeds you, right? <laughs> so, so it's a feeling of love. It's actually love. To exchange food between devotees is one of the six loving exchanges between devotees. To give prasadam and to receive prasadam is a loving exchange between devotees. And that's where sangha programs really facilitate that more and more. It's like last night we had some real nice prasadam by Mataji over there. I forgot your name. Huh? Padmasundari. Now I won't forget it anymore. I'm, so, I'm not good with names. And she made some nice bread that I was, wow, whoa. This is, and I, I'm, you know, it's still with me after last night. <laughs> And everybody was enjoying the prasadam. It was a nice program, and it was nice prasadam. And and uh, somebody gave a lecture. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, so but you know, prasadam is a, a very essential and very powerful point of devotees coming together and just. I mean, many times we just come together just for prasadam, right? And because prasadam is Krishna. And prasadam is so nice. And then you have so many nice women, maybe even some of the men can cook. And when you have these sangha programs, you can taste so many varieties of nice prasadam offered to the deities. And that's an, ex that's an experience of transcendental happiness. You know? So these Sangha programs, we can't get enough of them. I know one particular yatra where it's like that every night. You know, everywhere, anywhere within the yatra, there's programs going on every night, and sometimes two and three. And I know one country, it's the UK, in the United Kingdom, 
you there's at least nine to ten programs every night of the week in different places in London. It's just a matter of finding out where. <laughs> so this this is how we spread Krishna consciousness on these sanghas. The temple is nice, but we can't always come to the temple every day. It's not even practical. We have our you know responsibilities out there. But if we create a temple within the home and invite devotees and new people to come, we expand the movement and we turn the, we turn the society out there into Vaikuntha. It becomes like Vaikuntha out there. There was one devotee in Chicago, what he did, he moved into a new neighborhood and he went to everyone in the neighborhood and said, I am your new neighbor. Please come to my house for lunch. And he gave him a certain time. And it was about 50 people. They all came and he fed him, prashad him. <laughs> yeah. He, he just went knocking on the door. So I, I just bought that house over there. I'm your new neighbor. And I just want to say hello and, and uh, meet you. And so um, we're having a little dinner. So please come. Yeah. You can do that to your neighbors, too, and see how many come. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but we as a group, you know, we need to come closer and closer together so we can practice Krishna consciousness in a more, uh, what we say, effective way. The more you develop relationships with devotees, the more you feel happy in Krishna consciousness. And that's the fact. That's not a eulogy or just a theory or a principle. It's a reality. <laughs> it's a reality. And then you have no problems. I was saying last night, just like once it, when the community develops more, then if you need a doctor, there's somebody who's a doctor. There's somebody. Just like I was in London well, a couple of years ago, and it was breakfast time. I told this last night. And... Um, I was eating a peanut. I don't eat peanuts. I don't like them. <laughs> well, maybe some people like peanuts, but I like other nuts. And so I was, <laughs> so I was eating this peanut, and the peanut got angry at me for not liking me, not liking him. So he broke my tooth. <laughs> and it was breakfast time, and I thought, oh, I got a busted tooth. Oh, there's my friend. Krishna Kirtan. Oh, so I just went to Krishna Kirtan, got on my phone. Krishna Kirtan, are you in the office today? Yeah. Can I come? I got a bus. To, yeah. What time? Two o'clock. Sure, I'll be there. Same day I fixed the tooth. <laughs> so, so we have devotees who have so many skills, so many abilities, talents. They can teach. They can share. They can inspire. They can serve. And then community starts to develop nicely. And then we don't have to spend so much time and energy in the form of money getting the things we need from the outside world. Everything is done within the spiritual family. Now this is where these Sangha programs are the foundation for developing this family mood. And then more and more programs like that. And then sometimes what you can do is when the Sangha programs are going on, then you have one day where all the Sangha programs come together for one big Sangha. And it's more like a yatra. <laughs> like that. And then you can have like a festival on that one day, all the Sanghas coming together. So how important it is to associate with devotees and all of the benefits that come. And that's the whole process of Krishna consciousness, Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> So the association with devotees, mm -hmm. hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, uh, understanding deeper our relationship with Krishna and with each other, and experiencing the happiness of devotional service. All this is facilitated nice. We uh, shouldn't be what we called uh, Sunday devotees. <laughs> On Sunday, I'm a devotee and six days a week, I'm somebody else. <laughs> and there was a a rock and roll song um, that I that I liked when I was a kid, and it was by a group called Jethro Tull. You heard them? Yeah. Okay. And the song is 
He's not the kind you wind up on Sunday. That was the song. He's not the kind. In other words, he, they were saying, God is more important than just for Sunday. Yeah, it's a pretty, you know, advanced rock and roll song. <laughs> yeah, so because, you know, we see most modern religions, they have their once a day program, right? But as Krishna consciousness, you know, we, we want Krishna consciousness every day. Actually, every minute. <laughs> every minute. So these Sangha programs will help bring about so many benefits that can easily be obtained in the association of devotees like that. Okay, I was asked to ask a question to all of you. The question is, how many of you are regularly attending Sangha programs in person. That means not through the computer, online, like that. So we just can we have a show of hands? How many devotees are actually attending sangha programs at least once a week? And that's pretty good. Tat Purusha, you don't have your hand up. Our sangha is uh, two weeks. Oh, every two weeks. <laughs> oh, your wife put her hand up, I think. <laughs> Maybe she has a secret program you don't know about. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so, well, at least one, well, the question is not so much once a week, but how many of you are actually attending Sangha programs on a regulated basis? It doesn't have to be once a week like that. Yeah, let's go again like that. Yeah, and that is at least 50% of the devotees here. So that's good. So the other 50, think about it. <laughs> and plug in, because there, is, there are some sanghas, and we would suggest, and not only suggest, we would really highly encourage more programs to get started like that. And that way, it becomes more, programs can be happening more frequently, and devotees can be, as we mentioned, that some of the benefits not some, but many of the benefits that come by Sadhu Sangha. Uh, so that's basically the essential principles I wanted to speak about. And it's also a part of... And there's something nice about smaller groups. It's more intimate. It's more... You see, you seem to make friends easier in smaller groups. You can also exchange more personal talks. When we're in the temple, we're more or less we're, we're connected to the temple program. We don't get as much time to develop relationships as we could when we're in these smaller groups like that. And that's important. And that's important. Because a lot of times, you know, just like I'll go to a Sangha program, and I'll see something I like, and I'll say, boy, I need that. <laughs> that person has it. Just like I went to one uh, Sangha program, Mahatmananda's program, and uh, I, uh, I just had gotten a deity of Prabhupada, a small brass deity, and I was thinking I needed to get a Vyasa son. And then I came to his program, it was the perfect Vyasa son. I said, oh. I need one like that. Mahatman under, put me on your list. And he did. And now I have it. <laughs> so, you know, just by going there, sometimes you see something or you get some ideas that will help you in your own Krishna consciousness. And so then the advantages are innumerable. We can go on and on like that. So, any questions or comments or any things you would suggest or even realizations of some of the benefits that you've achieved by going to Sanghas? Yes, Hemangi, hey, hey, is it? Okay. Do we have a, a microphone we can give Hemangi hey, there? Because this way it's broadcast also.
Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a very inspiring class. I would like to share something with one of my Sangha, which I attend, and ask you if you can um, comment on that. You explained very nicely about relationship with devotees and all this uh, content, context uh, and content of Sanghas. So I heard once on one Sangha that uh, some of devotees can be very related to the Shastra. They can know a lot of Shastra, but they are not so like um, uh, open to relate with devotees, that kind of personality. Then there is some other personalities, like some other type of devotees who are very eager and connected with different devotees, but they are not so shastic, they don't know much about Shastra. But the person who chants purely, that person actually knows Shastra and relates with devotees properly. So uh, how much uh, uh, pure chanting or uh, very attentive chanting help us to develop our rela relationship with other devotees? And you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I can just acknowledge what you said. Yeah, it was perfect. The chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the foundation for our our advancement in Krishna consciousness. And as we go through the different stages from Nama Parad to Nama Bas to Sudanam, we actually expand our consciousness. And then a devotee can be what we say what is the word? Can do many things. A pure devotee can do so many can do so many things. It comes more like natural. Can have relationships, or it can also be, you know, it can. In other words, a pure devotee, or uh, the more advanced you are, the more you can fit into each and any situation you, you find yourself in, and also to contribute to that situation too, like that. Sometimes we come into a situation, we feel like, well, where do I fit in, you know, like that. We're either, we feel uncomfortable, shy, or somewhat dwarfed by the situation. But a, a pure devotee will, because they're all pure, uh, as you make advancement, you come in contact with Krishna more and more. So Krishna is with you, and you know that, and you can feel the presence of Krishna. So that that feeling of being with Krishna means, you know, wherever you are, you're with Krishna. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So there's nothing awkward or uncomfortable or unnatural. Is that uh, okay? Yeah. So it's it's ba yeah it is based on purifying our consciousness by uh, purifying our chanting. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Sangha programs really facilitate that, like that. We come to the temple, we have bhajans, but just like last night, we had about two hours plus of bhajans. Like that. So that was nice, just hearing and just doing bhajans. Because bhajans or kirtans are actually, you know, Lord Chaitanya's, you know, emphasis, sing and dance. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions on sanghas? Anyone else would like to comment on the sangha? Yeah, right there, Marcel. Um, thank you for inspiring lecture. Um, I would just um, like to ask, when you mentioned that um, we can have... Uh, Jai Shishi Pancha Tattva Ki Jai. Um, when you mentioned that we can have um, sometimes like um, not very comfortable feeling um, if we are in the beginning stages of um, spiritual path, so I would just like to ask how can we surpass this um, feeling? So how can, how can we um, how can we prepare ourselves to be in the proper consciousness in Sangha? So what are some techniques to be in the proper consciousness in Sangha? Well, we come to learn, so see how much you can learn by hearing, 
And if you can do some service, that's another thing. Think about what service you can do. Just like you're all hearing the lecture, that's service. You're serving by hearing, I'm serving by speaking. So there's no difference because we're both serving. Those who are not listening, they're not serving. <laughs> but those who are listening are serving because they are they are appropriate to the to the time, place and circumstance like that. So yeah, in the same way. So just think how you can serve in that situation. Or if you feel like you can't do anything, you can at least learn. Or you can be friendly to the devotees, that's nice. In general, you know. Yeah. That's, these are some of the things you can do. You might like to wash the dishes at the end of the program. <laughs> Help out, you know, to cook, cook so much and then everybody leaves and she goes into the kitchen and then everything is stacked up and nobody's there to help. <laughs> so, you know, staying, that happened with Prabhupada. Prabhupada, when he started the early in the early days, he was cooking and serving the new devotees at 26 Second Ave. He was doing everything. They would come, he would cook, and he would serve them. And, you know, go around and put things on their plate, and then uh, Prabhupada would clean up. Everybody would leave, and one day, two men who had come, they said to, they said after the program, Swamiji. Can we help you clean up? Prabhupada said, I was waiting for someone to ask. <laughs> he didn't ask anyone because, you know, he didn't want to, you know, make anyone feel uncomfortable. So, but he was always thinking it'd be nice if they come forward. And then when they did, he, he thanked them, you know. You know, you can help clean the house afterwards <laughs> at the Sangha program. Yeah, yeah, there's so many things. If you have an if you have an attitude of service, you'll think of something. And it'll happen automatically. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else? Okay, we can stop here. And uh, Gorarti has started. Yes. So we can begin. Mm -hmm. Gorarti. Shila Prabhupada ki ja Sarusanga ki ja. Hvala za čudovi.